our show Health and Wellness Myths versus Facts I'm Gargi Rawat The primary difference between health and wellness is that health is the goal and wellness is the active process of achieving it You truly cannot have health without first achieving wellness and 2 years into the pandemic our lives have become more sedentary than before Long working hours sedentary lifestyles poor food choices and lack of physical activity have all contributed to a variety of lifestyle disorders People with pre-existing disorders like diabetes and heart disease have been affected the most in the pandemic and medication adherence must become a priority as we deal with the continuing effects of the pandemic. For some people medical adherence itself is a new term to discover. Well, we have a expert a panel with us to help answer all your questions and tell you about its importance. Today we're joined by Dr. Manan Avi Mehta, consultant diabetologist Prakriti Health Clinic, the uh, Metabolics uh, Mumbai and Dr. Mayur Jain, intervention cardiologist kushal cardiac care thane thank you so much doctors for joining us on the program and sparing your time uh, dr mehta first to you poor adherence to medication in both long and short term conditions increases the risk of morbidity mortality and cost of care so what are the challenges uh, faced by patients in adhering to prescribed medications thank you so much ma'am uh, definitely adherence is one of the biggest problems which patients face we try to classify them into three categories one is the cost of the medication the other is the number of pills and the timing of those pills and the third is usually forgetfulness and carelessness so for the first two please do approach your physician and ask them if you can take a generic variant or a biosimilar so that the cost of the tablet comes down ask if you can have combination medication so that the pill burden becomes a little lesser um please keep a reminder in your phone we have phones for everything now so let's keep a reminder for that so that we can take the pills on time and finally as far as the forgetfulness and carelessness is concerned please remember if you have a train if you don't get on to it the train will go where it has to go you won't get the benefit out of it so if you want to get better you want to get the advantages uh, of your prescription then adherence is a must discuss with us so we can help you better All right uh, Dr Jain now smart approaches uh, provide a solution could you please tell us how self monitoring devices help improving a medical adherence Yeah thank you so uh, self monitoring devices have been the new things in uh, diabetes uh, the world is getting digital and smart so we should adhere to these uh, smart devices they help the patients to monitor their blood glucose levels throughout the day wherein the patients can understand which food stuffs are causing their sugar levels to go up at the same time uh, these monitoring devices also motivate the patients who are on uh, long term diabetes treatment that their medicines are working well when they see their sugar levels are under control they adhere best better to their medicines and insulin levels not only that it helps the doctors to adjust the doses and to optimize the medical therapy of the patients when they see their home monitoring chart also it warns the patients about very high glucose levels and very low glucose levels so that they can reach to the doctor or the hospital on time before it is too late or they get any complications from the varying sugar levels so this is very important to do this things get yourself checked get help home monitoring and uh, motivate yourself to take your tablets on time because you will see the effects on the self monitoring levels all right uh, you know you just don't realize how important it is first to go and get the prescription for medication and then make sure you follow what the doctor has told you uh, dr mehta if we talk about you know home uh, as well uh, what is the proper method for measuring and monitoring blood sugar and blood pressure levels at home because again many people have the devices have the machines but uh, there are certain do's and don'ts that they need to follow yes ma'am so dr jain sir said very rightly that you know if we keep the monitoring at home then we have a better idea I don't have to wait for the three months before the patient walks into my clinic to check them. SMDG is self monitoring of blood glucose. Um, in general, how often to do it depends on your type of diabetes. Are you type two diabetic, type one diabetic, pregnancy related diabetes? Whether you are on insulin or not, so I can judge the frequency. But in general, for our average patient, um, checking the fasting sugar once a week and checking your uh, post meal sugar two and a half hours. post any meal that is breakfast lunch or dinner those readings are important for blood pressure please do keep in mind check in the morning and evening because cortisol levels vary so your pressure uh, you know your pressure variability will be recorded if you chart it well always chart it with the time with what you ate 
and uh, what you had a little prior to that monitoring. Another thing you do is when you do the charting, get that data to me. Make sure that you have that data with you along with your blood work, so that we can guide you better in terms of tailoring your prescription. Giving a general prescription is one thing. Personalizing and tailoring it uh, can only be done if you give me enough data of what you've done at home. All right, uh, Dr. Jain. So uh, you know, staying with this uh, monitoring at home, home blood pressure monitoring also plays an important role in hypertension management. But can home blood uh, pressure monitoring be a substitute for visits uh, to your doctor? Definitely. Why not? Home BP monitoring and ambulatory BP monitoring have, in fact, become norms now, even for the doctors for uh, diagnosing blood pressure, for labeling a patient as a hypertension patient, as well as to monitor. the effect of their uh, tablets so home bp monitoring actually it's important for the patient to know how to take blood pressure it is very important to be in a sitting position with your back rested especially you can sit on a chair with your feet on the ground for 2 to 5 minutes before taking blood pressure also avoid taking coffee tea or tobacco in an hour before the taking the blood pressure readings so this is the ideal way to take blood pressure home bp monitoring gives you an idea how your blood pressure is throughout the day if you are taking multiple readings throughout the day or uh, as advised by a doctor i usually advise my patients to take it at 8 am 2 pm and 8 pm when i change the tablet or i start the tablet of newly for a newly diagnosed patient they should monitor the bp thrice and so that when they go to the doctor it is easier for them to adjust their doses of the tablets and optimize their medical therapy so home bp monitoring and ambulatory bp monitoring are can be a substitute to moni- uh, ch- going to the clinics it can avoid frequent visits to the hospitals and clinics but at the same time the change in the tablet or stopping the tablet should be the decision of the doctor and not your own decision All right, uh, Dr. Mehta. Now, what is the importance of a HbA1c test for people with diabetes, and how often should they get this done? And do these tests then help people with diabetes lower their medication dose on their own? And when should a person with diabetes then ask his doctor for a change in uh, the dosage of medicine? Right, ma'am. So HbA1c. The Hb stands for hemoglobin. The A1c stands for glycation. So what HbA1c essentially is. is the amount of sugar your hemoglobin has been exposed to over the last 3 months so hba1c gives me an average idea of your sugar over the last 3 months now this is a wonderful festive season we are going through patients will come to me in january with very nice fasting very nice pp but when i check the 3 month average i realize that the control has been suboptimal because of some indulgences which have happened so yes hba1c can be directly correlated Uh, with the level of your sugar control essentially it also gives me an idea how well i'll be able to prevent diabetic complications from happening because rather than a one day reading alone a three month average helps me a lot as to self changing of the medication is concerned as far as diabetes thyroid cardiology or dyslipidemic drugs are concerned i actively discourage patients from changing their own dose unless i specifically give instructions that you can make this tablet half if your sugars are this much you can make this more if your sugars are this much but without consulting us my staff or my health assistants i never advise my patients to fudge their doses on their own All right so that's important to keep in mind that you know even if you're monitoring uh, you need to just go to the doctor and only then uh, reduce your dosage or change any dosage uh, that is required a uh, doctor jain many people with hypertension stop the medication when they find that their blood pressure has uh, normalized uh, so what are the consequences of this that is the last thing i want any of my patients to do so it is my duty whenever i diagnose the patient with hypertension in the first meeting itself i tell them about the consequences of uncontrolled blood pressure if you stop your tablets suddenly you have to understand that your bp is controlled only because you are taking the tablet if you are not taking the tablet or stopping it then the bp may go ab- very high and you may get face consequences like stroke paralysis intracranial bleed you can have ble- bleeding in the brain heart failure kidney failure blindness or vision loss because of retinal hemorrhages so the consequences are very very bleak and you are taking this or inviting this trouble for at what cost just taking one or two tablets in a day 
so it is not worth believe me whenever it is required your doctor will ask you to decrease the dose of the medicine or stop it never stop the tablet without uh, the doctor's advice yes in some cases wherein the bp is diagnosed when the patient is uh, obese highly overweight and the doctor prescribes medicine as well as lifestyle modification like uh daily exercise walking weight loss diet and if the patient loses significant amount of weight his requirement of the blood pressure tablets may go down and he will be happy but the decision to decrease the dose or to stop the tablet remains with your consultant physician or your doctor because he is the best judge and he knows what are the consequences of stopping the tablet inadvertently when your blood pressure is not under control so believe me guys it's not good to t- stop a bp tablet unnecessarily without your doctor's advice because the consequences as i told you are very severe and you don't want them in your life all right so very important not to you know change uh, any medication on your own and i think both your doctors have emphasized that we'll slip into a short break now doctors and return with more questions for you stay with us Welcome back you're watching health and wellness myths versus facts and we're talking about the importance of adhering uh, to the medical protocols the medicines that you're prescribed by your doctors and not forgetting about it I let's go cross to our doctors now Dr Mehta some people with diabetes and heart disease believe that if they forget to take their morning medicine they, then they can just compensate by combining their morning and afternoon doses and take them at the same time so uh, tell us whether that is a good move or not See that's a very tricky question ma'am because while we would like our patients to have the medications bang on the time when we ask them to there is a reason for that the reason is very simple that all medications have their own pharmacokinetics that is why we dose certain medications in the morning certain medications in the evening also we have relation with terms of food so as much as possible i would like my patients to adhere to the dosage as we have told because taking it later might not have the result which is intended to a and it might also have negative effects b but you can always discuss with your doctor in terms of what medications can be taken this is called missed dose protocol so if i miss a dose what do i do do i do a catch up dose for example for thyroid you can do a catch up dose the next day where you can take the dose which you skipped yesterday and combine the two as far as insulin is concerned there is no catch up dose there can only be stat dosing as far as cholesterol tablets are concerned we like to give them after dinner so that there is better effect on hepatic neoglucogenesis if the tablets contain metformin for example we like to give them after food so there are multiple factors which go through what i love to do is i sit with my patients i talk to them and i tell them that a good physician knows when not to give a tablet also so you tell me your schedule when do you think you'll be able to take this on time and then i can tell them what their exact missed dose protocol can be remember diabetes and sugar all these lifestyle modifications are basically you've taken a loan from life so you have to keep paying the emi in terms of regular meditation in terms of regular medication in terms of regular exercise and in terms of regular diet all right so important uh, to keep all that in mind and basically try not to miss your morning dose of medication dr jain uh, if you can suggest some good or usual tips or ideas that will make it easier then for patients you know to follow and keep up with medication adherence yeah there are few important tips here to follow especially i would uh, ask the patients relatives and caregivers that they should have uh, a tab on what medications the patient is on and what are the timings of the medications uh, in fact patients can even maintain calendars or records of this they can maintain a small book i have seen so many of my beautiful old lady patients old patients they maintain a proper diary of what time with medication has to be taken and i, I really appreciate them for that whenever they come to me also there are very good boxes available in the medical shop wherein uh, there are days labeled as well as timings labeled and for those who are uneducated parents are uneducated uneducated or uh, they cannot read so for such patients the helpers or the caregivers can fill in the tablets in the similar boxes and the patient can take it easily also i in my practice what i do uh, there are in india luckily there are many combination drugs available 
so it is of the prerogative of the doctors that they should keep the pill dose to the or the pill number to the minimum so i like to use combination drugs in my therapy so that the number of pills the patient has to take in a day goes down and this improves patient compliance tremendously and also gives us very good control of uh, sugar and uh, blood pressure so the basic tips are use combination drugs keep a chart try to maintain a diary or use some medicine boxes available in the market which are very easy to follow uh, for your old age parents or um, uh, people who cannot read uh, so for them these boxes are very easy to take that the green box is for the morning the red is for the afternoon the yellow is for the evening and as rightly said by uh, dr mehta uh, cholesterol tablets has to be taken in the night because the enzymes which generate cholesterol are most active in the night so therefore the dosing we should be very proper also morning afternoon and evening and these are the few tips wherein the patients can uh, cannot are very unlikely to miss the doses if they maintain all these things right uh, dr mehta na hypoglycemic episodes can occur in people with diabetes to overcome this and avoid a hypoglycemic condition how much sugar or carbohydrates uh, should they consume Yes, ma'am. Now, this is one of the biggest fear that all our patients have, and not just patients. Even the physicians, even my residents, even my staff are always afraid that, sir, what do we do if the patient's sugar drops? First of all, if the sugar drops, the patient might have symptoms like sweaty palms. They feel faint. They feel thirsty. They feel hungry, and they will describe it in various terms. What you need to do is you need to check your sugar at that time. If it is uh, between fifty-four and seventy. it's called 111 where you can take sugar but at the same time you can even take a fruit because it's not that low if it's below 54 you need to take sugar directly remember not chocolates because they are complex they takes time for the stomach to break it down direct sugar or a direct candy is what works best third if the patient is disoriented if the patient is feeling faint unable to remember patient seems like they might fall that's called level 3 so for them to admit them and give them a dextrose in iv or to give them a glucagon injection these are the options available but practically in day to day life what i tell all my patients is keep three things always with you your glucometer an apple and a bottle of water because if you feel you are hypoglycemic it could be that you are just dehydrated check your sugar and ensure that it's actually dropping below 90 for you to be that way another thing is the best way to avoid hypoglycemia is to take your doses on time have your monitoring in place basically in a nutshell a summary of the entire discussion very kindly which uh, you know we have been given the opportunity to discuss today that will reduce your hypoglycemic episodes remember as dangerous as hyperglycemia is so is hypoglycemia when the difference between your trough and peak basically the difference between the lowest sugar of the day and the highest sugar of the day is too high it's called glycemic variability so as much as we want your sugar to be under control we also want it to have a narrow range of variability so keep a fruit with you keep sugar with you if you are on insulin and your sugar has dropped below 70 on certain occasions keep a bottle of water with you and keep a glucometer with you so these small things i think on the go for an average indian working patient uh, seem to be the practical tips but ensure you immediately go to your doctor or any physician or any nurse and say that this is what has happened can i correct my doses not stop my doses correct my doses all right uh, and uh, dr jain now uh, why is it necessary to know blood cholesterol and lipid levels and how they impact our health uh, some heart patients adopt a healthy lifestyle and as a result their cholesterol level goes down but then they still have high good cholesterol levels so what does that mean it has been years and decades now we know already that uh high cholesterol or the bad cholesterol high level of bad cholesterol causes blockages in the coronary arteries and not only the coronary arteries in the arteries of your legs in the arteries of your kidneys in the arteries of the brain, supplying the brain so high cholesterol is not only uh, uh, bad for a uh, heart but also for the brain so ldl cholesterol is the bad cholesterol hdl cholesterol is the good cholesterol as everyone must be knowing now 
so uh, the uh, guidelines for ldl reduction of ldl are have become very critical now for any patients or for a routine patient the ldl level should be less than 130 but if the patient is known diabetic or a hypertensive or if there is family history of heart attack then i usually target in my practice ldl levels of less than 100 so if the patient is on tablets and the ldl level has gone down uh, but the hdl level remains high i am happy hdl is a good cholesterol so if the hdl levels are good and the ldl levels are going down that means the medicine is working well and the risk of heart attack is decreasing at the same time there are a few tablets also which can increase the hdl levels so uh, you can consult your doctor for the same but it is very important to remember that if you have a history of angioplasty done or a bypass done or you have very uncontrolled diabetes your ldl target should be as low as possible guidelines say ldl less than 55 for those with cardiovascular risk of more than 10% there is a score called ascbd score if it is more than 10% the ldl should go below 55 and therefore in my clinical practice Uh, my targets of ldl are much lower for my patients because in the end prevention is better than cure so if you are keeping your cholesterol levels in a good limit you can prevent coronary strokes can from happening cerebral strokes from happening so you can prevent many many complications if you just keep your cholesterol under level uh, in the second bit i would like to say that apart from medicines good exercise 30 minutes of walk daily and good amount of uh, aer- any kind of aerobic exercise like swimming or cycling is a must to keep your cholesterol and sugars and blood pressure under control all right doctors uh, thank you so much uh, you know for explaining this to us and talking about the importance of medical adherence thanks for your time and thank you all for watching at home goodbye